What's going on gamers? Today we'll be going over how to play mod packs from the FTB launcher. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell in order to stay updated on all of our tutorial videos. Minecraft is an incredible experience for many players, and for others it has served as a foundation for far more. With the growing community of modders, Minecraft has seen a large influx of mods and mod packs to tailor to the player's needs. Whether there's a set of mods focused on teching up through the ages of Steam, Coal, and Fusion, or a mod pack solely focused on expanding Minecraft's adventure more than ever before, Feed the Beast has been a group at the core of many of the most popular mod packs in Minecraft history, including Direwolf, Sky Factory, and Affinity Evolved. At Apex, we host the latest versions of nearly every pack they've released recently. However, FTP has decided to end their partnership with CurseForge, and now use their own launcher exclusively for the latest updates of their mod packs. Still, that doesn't stop the FTB launcher from being a convincing choice. With its direct support for all the Feed the Beast mod packs, including mod pack specific RAM settings, it remains the easiest way to play FTB packs even when they are still partnered with Twitch. So today, we will look at how to install the FTB launcher and get started with your favorite Feed the Beast mod pack. The first thing we'll need is Java. Minecraft runs on Java, so it's important to ensure that you have the latest version installed. You can always check in Windows by searching and clicking on About Java in the Start menu. And if you're unable to check, you can always try installing the latest version of Java on the Java website. And after you finish installing it, you'll need to restart your computer. First, open the Feed the Beast website and click on the Download button under Windows. Once it's downloaded, run the .exe file. When it loads, click Next. And you may change the directory from default if you want, but then you'll click Next again. The install of the files will begin. When it's finished, ensure Run FTB App is checked and click Finish. After a few moments, the launcher will start and you will be able to install your first mod pack. First, open the Feed the Beast website and click on the Download button under Mac OS. Double click on the DMG file once it's done downloading to begin the install process. It'll verify and then a window will open. You'll drag the FTB app icon into the applications icon. This will install the application into your applications folder. After that, close the window, open up your applications folder and double click on the FTB app. After a few moments, the launcher will start and you'll be able to install your first mod pack. Now that the download is finished, we can install a mod pack from either the Home tab or Browse under the Mod Packs tab. For the tutorial's sake, we will choose FTB Academy in the Home screen. When hovering over the Packs icon, a download icon appears. Click on that to begin the installation. Then, if you want, you can choose a specific version. We will be leaving it to the latest and clicking the Install button. When it is finished, It'll appear in both Recently Played Packs on the Home tab and My Mod Packs under the Mod Packs tab. You can now hover over the pack and click the Play icon. The Minecraft launcher will open, and if you haven't logged in before, you'll need to log in using your Minecraft email and password. Now I'll go over some common issues. The first one that we face is insufficient memory allocated to Java. This typically isn't as much of a problem with the FTB mod packs as the launcher tries to use the recommended size. However, if this issue occurs, you can fix it by doing this. First, click the three dots when hovering over your mod pack in the FTB launcher. Second, click on the settings tab for the pack. Finally, change the instance memory slider. For example, if it was on about three gigabytes, try raising it to five gigabytes. It's important not to raise it too much higher than 50% of your total system memory. For example, if you have 8 gigs of RAM, you shouldn't raise it any further than 4 gigs. Well folks, that'll do it for this video. And as always, I hope that you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.